job here. Uh, officially, I'm the kitchen manager, but me, Steve, Richard, I have and Saxon, I have it. I just get paid a dollar fifty for work. Oh, it's pretty much just everything you see, like washing dishes, wraps, desserts, appetizers, everything. But that we had to clean up afterwards. So we're cooks, dishwashers, janitors, and sometimes maids all at once. So it's good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Players, you have no more than four minutes. Are you ready? Yes! Shh! If you touch anything, it might alter the future years to come. <laughs> if we go back to the present, everything might have wings if you squash that ancient mosquito right there. Where? <laughs> Where? Uh-oh! <laughs> Uh oh. I'm loving it! <laughs> you just killed that, which might have horrible repercussions, but I am loving the Mesozoic era. Well, you know what? We're gonna have to shake and bake for our dinner, because I'm not seeing anything I want to eat as it is. Look, a stegosaurus. <gasps> Maybe we can eat that. It'll go so good with crumbs. I like that. Let me try to sneak up on it. Seven days, you have to follow these things. And on the seventh day, there was food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good job. I bet you never seen a stegosaurus killed with a saw-off before. I never <laughs> saw one drop so fast. The last hunt I was on, my dad said, it's so easy, a caveman can do it. <laughs> that is a coincidence. <laughs> Your time with the time machine is just about over. I think it's time we got back in and headed back to the future. <laughs> or the present. Well, you know, it was in the past. Stay old, pony boy. <laughs> Don't let him take us back. I'm not going. We like it here. It's better than the world we live in. There's no hole in the ozone layer, nor are there politicians. <laughs> my precious, my precious past we're living in. Oh, 
that's all true. Well, you know, you sign a contract, uh, you know, the time machine's only on rent for like an hour at a time. You go back, you go forward. That's the way it works. And that's, frankly, uh, my dear, I don't give a darn whether you go back to the future or not. But we haven't eaten the Stegosaurus yet. <laughs> well, I understand that is part of the contract. You can eat whatever you kill. Oh, so I'm go ahead kidding. and get started cooking it and with the, you know, shaking and baking. We can eat whatever we kill, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Introducing the Celtic heritage to the ancients! While I ponder, weak and weary, I could give you another extension on your time limit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I get paid by the hour anyway. Well, join us! I see dead people. <laughs> Describe to me the yes and attitude. Yes and attitude is the philosophy of an improviser. Yes and, yes I accept the offer that you just gave me for this scene and I'm going to heighten and build on it. My name's Dave Gow and I've been doing improv in Richmond for about 11 years. Started with comedy sports when they started almost 11 years ago here in Richmond. And I've been with comedy sports the majority of that time. Uh, I'm doing a few other improv ventures along the way and other comedy ventures. And when I'm not doing the evening improv fun stuff, I'm doing my own business, which is computer animation. I have a business, we call it Shave FX, and we do computer animation for commercials and for corporate videos, trade shows, um, architectural visualizations, and, and scientific recreations, things like that. I teach, which is performing, and I've been doing it for a long time, 20 years, and improv and teaching go hand in hand. The difference is when I teach, I've got notes, old, withered, yellowed notes that I teach from that I rarely update. Shh. And in improv, you got to make stuff up. So now I'm, when I teach, I'm finding myself making up dates and names and theories, and oh. it's really bad because I shouldn't be doing improv when I'm teaching. But in reality, though, it's, it's fun because improv and teaching go hand in hand because you're in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get people to listen and, and be entertained. I'm, you know, when you teach people who are bored to death what you're saying, you've got to be entertaining. So I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of improv into my teaching, and I think I'm a much worse teacher as a result. Oh. Because uh, now I'm having a little bit too much fun in the classroom. Yay. Right? Yeah. Is that a bad thing or no, a good thing? No, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I All think right. so.